Hey guys, <clears throat> so today you and I are going to talk about tech careers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was Frederick, are tech companies creating tech first career paths to take care of the growth of their software, uh, to take the growth out of their software engineers? Um, no, they're not trying to remove uh, your, like, stagnate your personal growth. Uh, the reason why the tech first angle has been played, or like it's being, that people are trying to introduce it is because they're, they're basically trying to figure out a way to retain the people who don't want to become managers. And they're trying to uh, give, incentivize people who can do things to continue doing things because there is a surplus of people who only talk and we have a deficit of people who do things. I think, I mean, the classic one is the 80-20 rule and some argue that it might be even more than that and I am prone to agree on that. Uh, the vast majority of people who are put in a position where there's, a, there's very little in terms of understanding of the value that they provide as an individual to an organization they usually uh, pure and simple they don't actually provide much concrete value they for the most part they talk talking is great but uh, it's unfortunately not enough to run a company on and I suppose that depends on the company in a way but that's usually why the technical career path is developed so that you, one part, as I said, is that you have people who don't want to become managers or something like that, which is, has always traditionally been the thing, the way things go. You grow to a certain point where you have to manage people and even if we have a tech path these days, it's not really possible to reach the same sort of or levels without some type of influence usually but there are a few takes that I've seen personally that I think uh, like it, it's promising it's going in the right direction because as I said they sort of uh, it's I think it's actually fun I think that this is like a micro it's a drop in the bucket of a bigger problem of course uh, but it is a it's a meaningful thing, I think, when an organization realizes that value, impact, these sorts of things are what matter. Because, at least from my perspective, the vast majority of companies um, in the world, I'm not talking just IT, I'm talking just in general, uh, the society that we live in usually rewards position more than output. Uh, it's more important that you hold, and that's why I've tell, told people, you, I've said this before guys, there is uh, you, you, the idea that you having a certain role or so forth, or calling yourself senior or like these sorts of titles that you can invent, that that means that you have more value than somebody else is complete bullshit. Most people in the world, uh, it's almost, in some cases you could almost think that it's like uh, one of those old monarchies where you have people who are so incompetent who get into positions where they get paid like insane amounts of money, but they're actually borderline incompetent. Uh, because just because you might be the person running the show that doesn't necessarily mean that you are competent and this this thing that we're talking about here is a way to combat that because when it, there's a tech path when you can actually raise yourself up by actually just being very competent in something actually very hands-on uh, it offers you an opportunity to maintain both your market value as a software developer and actually be get paid the sort of same sorts of salaries or like reward we get rewarded at the same level as someone who might have transitioned into a more management role. Now the trick here, or the, the tricky part here is that fundamentally it is almost impossible for you to only focus on the coding and then be rewarded in the same way as a person who has influence and like manages and so forth does uh, the the way that I've seen it work best is when you think in terms of impact in other words if you are supposed to be like a super senior software developer and you really know your stuff about tech 
well maybe you don't have to be a manager but at the very least you're gonna have to provide some type of holistic like cross team or you know your, your impact on people has to be higher than that you sit and do stories for yourself that's not gonna add much value and that's the thing I think most companies are at this point struggling with a lot to figure out how do we make this feasible because you have to realize something guys it's uh, it's actually very very interesting I've spoken to many managers who are friends of mine uh, who tell me the same thing where they have really talented software engineers and some of them think feel like uh, the only way that they can make progress in their life or their career is to become a manager but the problem is that then they lose their massive talent for the engineering and as one told me that I mean I can find a consultant who can sit and do meetings and stuff like that but I can't just find someone who's really good at the craft which in a way is a little bit sad so I think that this is a step in the right direction although it's still I think way early to say if it's it's no by no means as as an as established a solution to this problem as the standard hey you're a manager now so what I want you to take away from this is that the tech career path is has not very it hasn't so much to do with holding people back or trying to you know move them uh, move them into something that's not going to be beneficial. It's actually a way that is it's it's more about retaining people's talent and actually leveraging it because the reality is that uh, unfortunately sooner or later a software developer stagnates unless they become a manager or something like that in many cases uh, if they want to stay within the company and so the companies have to come up with some way of rewarding people who are just really skilled at the craft and the way that we're trying to do that is to basically allow you to progress to the same sort of levels as a manager I don't I've never seen that really happen I don't there because fundamentally if you work by yourself or like just in one single team or something like that it's impossible for you to have the same sort of impact as someone who manages people and so different companies use different ways of modeling this the way that I've usually seen it be the most effective is when you take someone and provide them in and set them up with a technical role where they have cross team impact where usually they work on type of some type of platform team where like they're supporting other developers or they create internal tools or something like that and they usually try to reserve those sorts of roles and responsibilities to the people who have a very strong understanding of software development and a lot of good imp uh, positive impact on the other teams and you can make an argument and I think that I usually make that argument that although that is more engineering still it's still a like a management type of role and I think that, that sort of says itself you can almost take this as a rule of thumb the more upwards you want to move the more people you're gonna to have to touch base with and the less time you're gonna to have to just sit by yourself that's usually how it goes have a great day